Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're viewing this, I'm glad you're here. My name is Vicar Connor, and I'm excited to be continuing our devotional series on the end times. And today we're actually going to be looking at a, a middle prophet, a middle of the story of everything prophet, the prophet Isaiah, and what he has to say about the last day. Because sometimes I feel like when we read Revelation, we think Revelation is this independent book at the end of the Bible who has unique ideas and perspectives. But the reality is the Apostle John is at the end of the story of everything. His understanding of the last day, while definitely told in a different way, his understanding is exactly the same as everyone who had gone before him. And so in order to understand Revelation, we're going to look at the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, and what he has to say. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to be singing an Advent song for our song today, hymn number 338, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And before you get up in arms about Vicar, we're doing an Advent song before Advent, I know. Uh, but we are doing it because most Advent songs have this dual purpose of not only does it reflect the uh, celebration of the first coming of Jesus, but it's also a song we say towards the second coming of Jesus. We all certainly are praying, come thou long expected Jesus. We eagerly await that last day. Please join me in song. Scripture reading is from Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he sees, or decides disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. 
They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but sometimes reading the book of Revelation can be kind of confusing. There's the bowls of God's wrath, and then there's the trumpets of God's wrath, and before that, there's the scrolls that are broken, and it makes you at first reading say, okay, is there going to be three sets of destruction that comes about? And the reality is, as we read Revelation, it's again, as I mentioned in the beginning, one of these books that you got to understand the beginning and the middle in order to truly understand what the Apostle John is saying. And I would even argue that we're never going to fully understand these apocalyptic visions until we see Jesus coming down on a cloud and our minds are made perfect and we finally go, oh, I get it. But we'll be in the new heaven and new earth by then. And I don't know if we'll necessarily care. Who knows? But my point is, in order to understand Revelation, you've got to understand that John is building off of the story of everything that has come before him. He understands in Revelation that there are not three sets of disasters, but there's one. They're each retelling the same thing. And Revelation is not a linear story, but a cyclical set of stories meant to point to one final day. How do we know this? Well, because of the prophets. What we're looking at today, and we're going to explore what Jesus has to say tomorrow. But today, let's just look at what Isaiah has to say. You see, verses 1 through 5, you'll notice they're all kind of clumped together. At least in my Bible, it does that. It shows they're clumped together. And then there's a break in between verses 5 and 6. And there's a reason. Because verses 1 through 5 talk about this shoot from the stump of Jesse, his branch that shall bear fruit. This is the first coming of Jesus. Jesus, being a descendant of Jesse, a son of David, is this descendant, this shoot, whom the Spirit of the Lord rests upon. Jesus is going to come. He has come. He delights in doing his Father's will. And notice that he, in his ministry, does not support the rich, the bold, the proud, but instead does as Isaiah prophesies. He judges the poor. He decides with equity for the meek. Jesus reflects those same languages on the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are the meek. We already see Jesus fulfilling that prophecy. But then there's a break. And Isaiah, through the Holy Spirit, the power of the Lord's word in him, understands that that's the first coming. There's going to be a second coming as a result of that first coming, as a result of Jesus' death and resurrection. When he comes again, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb. The calf and the lion together, the child's going to lead them. The cow and the bear graze together. A nursing child shall uh, stick their hand and play with the cobra. Now, I don't know about you, but I would not trust my six-month-old daughter with a cobra. And so we understand that part one of Isaiah's prophecy, one through five, has certainly come true. Even verse 10, which says that all nations inquire to Jesus, that's prayer. All nations pray to Jesus, or at least people groups from all nations. And yet we're still waiting that last day, that single last day, when truly every single person will know that Jesus is Lord whether they're here dwelling with him as a saved individual or they're being punished in eternal hell. Either way, they'll still know he's Lord. That has yet to be fulfilled. We know because Jesus has not returned yet. 
But when he does, Isaiah's prophecy about this perfect peace again, this perfect unity again, the wolf lying down with the lamb, the new heaven and new earth, as John calls it, will indeed come. It's what we anxiously await. I anxiously await for my daughter to be able to play in it with a cobra. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, anxiously await with me for the time when our Lord will come again, who indeed is judging the poor and the meek justly. He hears you. And he's also coming again, so that the wolf can lie down with the lamb. Amen. Would you say the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord as we anxiously await for that final day. Amen.